flying in a military aircraft over a troubled land, though you might never guess. Pathy Victorial's magic carpet today takes you to the peace and loveliness that so often obstinately punctuate ugliness and brutal strife. You'd never suspect that down the road there were Greek guerrillas sniping at the Turks who were in possession of St. Hilarion, this fairy castle that covers the coastal plain where, the Greeks maintain, these Turks are building an invasion road. This misleadingly tranquil scene is in Cyprus. Cyprus, the island of hate that so often, so quickly reverts to what it began as the island of love. The island where Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love, was born out of sea spray on this very beach. Aphrodite's island, magically rich in the treasures of ancient yesterdays. Treasures which seven years ago lay buried unsuspected in the sand. The city of Salamis. Greeks and Turks live uneasily side by side round this hidden city they're now digging out of oblivion. The sand came in handy for sandbags at the roadblock down the road, but these local people always thirsted for this workaday peaceful life. Two years before the British left this island of love turned to hate, they started the diggings that have yielded these incomparable discoveries. And today, the British are not altogether unwelcome. The island is changing again, learning to forget its hatreds. The recent past is being buried, as the remote past is dug up and re-echoed among the Greek craftsmen of Nicosia, working copper as their ancestors used to do. Just how misleading can a street scene be? This is the battle-torn capital, where since Cypriots started fighting, first the British and then each other, nearby Ledra Street has been known as Murder Mile. Has the island of hate become Aphrodite's island of love once more? Here you find contrasts, contradictions, sophistication alongside simplicity, sunshine and shadows, blazing motor roads and that creature that can navigate the desert's trackless ways. East and West, Greek and Turk. Peace so close on strife. They've grown olives and all sorts of fruit in Cyprus for longer than anyone has written harsh history. Though last year the crops were unpicked because of fighting in many of these groves near Kyrenia, the Cyprus port just 41 miles away from the Turkish shore. There's the scent of lemons in the air, figs too, and pears, almonds and sesame. Here you get sweet lemons and bitter oranges, as well as the bitter lemons that Lawrence Durrell took as the title of the book he wrote at Bella Pais, the Byzantine monastery, here where he found tranquility and a tree called the Tree of Idleness. A mile away there's been fighting over a cow missing from a Greek farm. But the cows come back with a calf. So now the Turks, who were accused of stealing it, can once more drink their coffee under that tree of idleness, watching the treadmill performance of a beast that's too much of an ass to be idle. Contrasts. On this farm, they tell the time not by some old-fashioned watch, but by the clockwork arrival of the London plane. You step off a modern aircraft into all the fun of an old world fair. Alongside the trouble, there's always a fair or a festival to cushion all signs of bitterness. But always contrasts. In the country, the sheep share the market day bus. Clashing Cypriots never quite forget that this is still Aphrodite's island. Even honeymoon couples still come here for their holidays. You can travel miles without seeing any signs of violence or the aftermath of civil war. In the sunshine, peacefulness slips back so naturally and speedily in the midst of reminders of our British occupation. All of them cosy. You too could be a warrant officer. 
Bells. You hear bells all over this island. Bells beckoning you to a gay fair or a quiet church. St. Paul came here with his fellow missionary, St. Barnabas, who gave his name to this monastery where three brother monks are as picturesque as the icons that one of them paints. The peace of God and the fighting there's been seems to belong to a different place and epoch. Is the shooting finished for good and all? The only hint of it we see is in the wary tread of these hunters. But it's so often been apt to break out in places like the timeless village where they live. Sleepy enough, but could they tomorrow once more be shooting bullets instead of dice, dealing out death? That has long been the recurring pattern of a place where the hot sun makes people sleepy one day, hot-headed the next. Dismiss it, if you will, as superstition. That woman is paid money to smoke out the evil eye that the countrymen tell you will always lurk in Alibaba jars like these. And all that alongside such British innovations as a pub rest in a tree. Two worlds meeting and liking it. Aphrodite's island of contrasts and contact, at least for a time. The easternmost island of the Mediterranean, and those policemen could have come from Piccadilly. Still no sign of strife as a gay parade gets underway. There's adulation in the air, the fervent love that can provoke hatred. They're awaiting that mysterious man who's all things to the Greeks in this love-hate capital the Archbishop politician Makarios, today on a devout mission entirely in tune with Aphrodite. See him and you understand this unpredictable island, sunburnt, steeped in strange ritual, inscrutable. One hand bestowing the thing of God, one wielding practical power. Romantic, incalculable. Having many times travelled the road of strife, travelling now, it seems, the path of peace. Ultimate destination, obscure.